In the middle of 2006, Sony announced that they were going to enter the digital SLR market and they bought the uh, SLR assets of Konica and Minolta who were withdrawing from that market. The first launch was the Alpha 100, which in truth was more a Konica and Minolta camera than a Sony camera, but they did promise great things for the future. Well, the future has now arrived in the shape of the Alpha 700. <laughs> This time they're targeting the middle range of the market with a thousand pound camera targeted at the serious enthusiast. So let's see what it's like. At its core is a 12.2 megapixel CMOS sensor uh, called Exmor, which uh, has some unique features. The main one being that it converts the signal from analog to digital on the sensor itself rather than afterwards. Now the main benefit of this is that normally uh, noise generated on the sensor is amplified as it passes down the electronic pipe through the processor. But on this case, the noise reduction is applied on the sensor itself, and there's further noise reduction applied further down the chain. Well, we'll come on to the image quality in a moment, but first of all, let's look at the body. Well, what can I say? The A700 is built like a tank from a magnesium alloy body on an aluminium chassis. Um, it's got seals against moisture and dust and all the main points, and yet at 690 grams, it's not overly heavy, but having said that, it does feel, does feel reasonably substantial and solid. Build quality is probably on a par with its main competitors, which are the Nikon D300 and the Canon EOS 40D. So let's look at the back. As you can see, it's dominated by this nice three inch um, super fine LCD screen. Now this is a very high resolution screen, 920,000 dots, which is about four times better than its predecessor. And it really is a fantastic screen. Now, unlike the Alpha 100, which featured a, uh, a dial up here to adjust things like ISO and uh, quality and white balance, this one has a function button on the back and a joystick control so you can scroll around to the main areas. Here's ISO, exposure and flash exposure compensation. Um, this is actually a lot quicker than the uh, Alpha 100. Uh, makes it very responsive and it's pretty easy and uh, simple to use. So any selector setting, something like ISO, you've got the joystick to move around, you select ISO, you press the button in the middle, this is where you've got the, the option to change the settings. As you can see, ISO goes up to 3200 and there's also an option for uh, 6400. On the top also, there are shortcut buttons to ISO, white balance, drive mode, you've also got exposure compensation on the top, and these are just pretty quick access buttons, you just press it once and you go straight into the ISO mode. One of the really nice things about this display is if you're shooting in the portrait mode, the display changes to portrait format with you. You'll also notice on the uh, display that the battery status is, uh, because Sony uses the infolithium display, it doesn't just give you a, a fairly uninformative battery icon, but it actually tells you the percentage of charge left in the battery, which is something I find really useful. Okay, what else have we got on the back? Obviously over here you'll notice the super steady shot, which is also on the Alpha 100. But on this camera, it's been adjusted so that it can provide up to four stops of image stabilization, which is uh, pretty useful, especially for low light or using big telephoto lenses. You can see up here the, uh, the metering mode selection. You've got the uh, multi-pattern metering, center weighted and spot. There's an exposure lock in the middle too. There's also an autofocus, manual focus button on here, so you can quickly switch to manual focus at the touch of a button without having to turn the camera around and fiddle around at the front. Although, of course, there is also the uh, focusing mode control on the front as well. Another nice feature yeah, unique to the Sony cameras is the dynamic range optimizer. Now, the dynamic range optimizer seeks to try and control highlight and shadow detail in high contrast scenes. The Alpha 100 had a fairly basic dynamic range optimizer, which uh, clipped basically the highlights and shadows to retain them. On the 700 there's a far more sophisticated version which uh, offers you, if you want it, um, five levels of control so you can have a lot of um, optimization or just a small amount. There's also an advanced auto mode where you let the camera select which of those five levels that you want it to, to apply as well as of course a standard and an off position. Now the Alpha 700 takes compact flash, it also takes memory stick um, Pro Duo as well if you prefer to use that system. On the other side of the camera, you'll see that it has a PC flash ink socket, which is uh, nice to see, for, especially for studio photography. The covers for all of these uh, inputs are really, really nice. There's a remote uh, socket there. The camera does actually come with a uh, handheld remote control device, but you can also attach uh, cable remotes as well. Also, as you'd expect from Sony, who are obviously a major manufacturer of um, high definition widescreen televisions, there's a pretty good connectivity with their Bravia TVs. If you use the HDMI slot here and use it with a compatible TV, there's a feature called um, Photo TV HD, which delivers really, really good picture quality on a TV set. 
the handling, I have to say, is pretty swift. I find it really nice having a dial, two dials, so you can input shutter speeds and apertures separately. I think that speeds up the shooting process. Um, the camera focuses extremely quickly. See, it's pretty much there straight away. Um, you can shoot five frames a second, which is... Um, it's not the fastest, the EOS 40D can do 6.5, but 5 is still pretty good. So when you come to view the pictures you've taken, you've got several display options. There's the standard view, but also this one has a very nice um, option here where you've got a thumbnail along the top and you can scroll through the other pictures you've taken and see along the top the thumbnails of the other shots. One of the nice things about having a really high resolution screen is that uh, you can zoom into it really quite far and see a lot of detail which uh, you wouldn't be able to see on a lower resolution screen. I mean, you can really go right in there and get in really close. This enables you to zoom right into the picture to see if it's really sharp. We use the Alpha 700 with the Zeiss 16 to 80 millimeter lens. You could also use it with the, uh, the kit lens that comes with the Alpha 100, although we really wouldn't recommend that so much. This is a far better option. And there's also a 16 to 105 millimeter lens on the way. That's not quite ready yet. One thing you may notice is when holding this camera is the whizzing around of the, of the lens focusing. Um, this camera has something called eye start, which is again unique to Sony, which is the little sensors underneath the viewfinder. It detects when, you, when you've got it close to your face and it starts the autofocus up for you, which makes it quite fast to use. When you're not using it though, it does kind of waste the battery and it makes a lot of whizzing noises when you just cut it against your body. So you may want to turn that option off. You can do it if you want to. So what about that all important image quality? Let's have a look. Image quality on this camera we found very impressive indeed. Uh, the noise, as you'd expect from a camera that applies noise reduction both on the sensor and at the processing stage, is very well controlled. At ISO 1600, noise is visible, but it's a lot better than most other cameras and is probably equivalent to ISO 800 on most of its competitors. One of the downsides of noise reduction on some cameras is that it does affect the image sharpness, but not on this camera. Pictures are really nice and sharp. With that Zeiss lens in particular, and the benefits of the Super Steady Shot as well, you've got really nice sharp images. There are so many options for controlling the colour and the tonal range with things like the dynamic range optimizer that really you can get the picture to looking just as you want to and we found that the, uh, the pictures overall were very pleasing indeed. So overall a very accomplished performance from the Alpha 700 but then for a thousand pounds you'd expect that and it is after all competing with some also very accomplished cameras in the Canon EOS 40D and the Nikon D300. Now the Sony does have the benefit over the Canon of an extra two megapixels, 10 megapixels on the Canon uh, 40D and, and 12 on this one. It also has a much, much higher resolution LCD screen, so viewing pictures is, is, a, is a nicer experience on this camera than on the Canon. But it doesn't have live view like the Canon has, and also like the Nikon D300 has. Whether live view is something that you want or feel you need is obviously a personal decision. Um, obviously about a year ago there was no live view on any digital SLR really, so um, it's something it's useful if you've got the camera on a tripod and you want to uh, be able to view the scene without having to put your eye to the viewfinder. Um, but again, that's a personal decision. It isn't as fast as the Canon either, 6.5 frames a second on the Canon against 5 frames per second uh, on this camera. But again, unless you're a very serious sports or action photographer, 5 frames a second is more than enough for most people. Now the Nikon D300 does have live view, does have the high resolution LCD screen and does have 12 megapixels, but it is about three or four hundred pounds more expensive, so the Sony certainly on paper looks better value for money. Overall we think this is an extremely nice camera, beautifully designed, handles really nicely, very responsive, picture quality is excellent, and for the price, a thousand pounds, it's pretty good value for money when you compare it with the, the Canon and the, uh, the Nikon, it's fairly competitive. Overall, we give this camera a 91% and the coveted What Digital Camera Gold Award. <laughs>